Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen, the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship in Brooklyn, New York, and it's time for today's daily devotion. This is where we read a chapter from the Bible uh, each day, most days, five days a week. And today we're reading Mark chapter 11. We're going through Mark's gospel in order, started in chapter 1. Now we're at chapter 11, so this is the 11th video in the series. We went all the way through Matthew's gospel, and we'll keep going. And in today's chapter, Mark 11, uh, there, uh, we see the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Jesus curses a fig tree. Jesus clears the temple. The authority of Jesus is also challenged by the folks in charge. Let's begin Mark chapter 1. As Jesus in his, excuse me, Mark chapter 11, verse 1. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead, and go, he said, Go into that village over there. As soon as you enter it, you'll see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks what you're doing, just say, The Lord needs it, and he'll return it soon. The two disciples left and found the colt standing in the street, tied outside the front door. And as they were untying it, some bystanders demanded, Hey, what are you doing untying that colt? They said what Jesus had told them to say, and they were permitted to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it, and he sat on it. Many in the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others spread leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Jesus was the center of the, pro the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, Praise God! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessings on the coming kingdom of our ancestor David! Praise God in highest heaven! So Jesus came to Jerusalem and went into the temple, and after looking around carefully at everything, he left because it was late in the afternoon. Then he returned to Bethany with the twelve disciples. The next morning, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry, and he noticed a fig tree in full leaf a little way off. He went over to see if he, if he could find any figs, but there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for fruit. Then Jesus said to the tree, May no one ever eat your fruit again, and the disciples heard him say it. When they arrived back in Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple again and began to drive out the people buying and selling animals for sacrifices. He knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves, and he stopped everyone from using the temple as a marketplace. He said to them, The scriptures declare my temple will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you've turned it into a den of thieves. When the leading priests and the teachers of religious law heard what Jesus had done, they began planning how to kill him. They were afraid of him because the people were so amazed at his teaching. And that evening, Jesus and the disciples left the city. The next morning, they passed the fig tree he had cursed, and the disciples noticed it had withered from the roots up. Peter remembered what Jesus had said to the tree on the previous day and exclaimed, Look, Rabbi, the fig tree you cursed has withered and died. And then Jesus said to the disciples, Have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, May you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it'll be yours. But when you're praying, first forgive anyone that you're holding a grudge against, so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Again, they entered Jerusalem. As Jesus was walking through the temple area, the leading priests and teachers of religious law and elders came to him, and they demanded, By what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you the right to do them? I'll tell you by what authority I do these things. If you answer one question, Jesus replied, Did John's authority to baptize come from heaven, or was it merely human? Answer me. They talked it over amongst themselves. If we say it was from heaven, then he'll ask why we didn't believe John. But if we dare say it was merely human, well, they were afraid of what the people would do because everyone believed that John was a prophet. So they finally replied, we don't know. Jesus responded, then I won't tell you by what authority I do these things. That's the end of Mark chapter 11. And 
uh, a, a lot happening here, a lot of significance. We, we started this chapter with Jesus' triumphal entry. And that procession, that scene that's depicted here, Jesus riding on the colt of a donkey, the people lying their uh, garments, laying their garments on the, on the road and cutting the, the branches and, uh, and, and sort of carpeting the roadway for him to come. That's what we observe today. Yeah, on Palm Sunday, so the Sunday before Easter, marks that triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And then we will see as we continue in the coming chapters that the, the atmosphere is going to change drastically. And the people will go from celebrating Jesus' entry, shouting Hosanna, shouting praise God, the kingdom of David has come, God bless this one has, who has come to crucify him, just in a matter of days. Uh, but Jesus, as he enters Jerusalem, is uh, deeply celebrated. And so um, that's where we, where we are. We're entering in to that holy week, that, that last week of Jesus' earthly life and ministry. I uh, hope you've been blessed by uh, Mark chapter 11. Hope you join us next time for Mark chapter 12. God bless.